In this video, I'll walk through an example of finding an empirical formula given some general makeup of a compound. And then I'll talk a little bit about the molecular formula. A sample of a compound has 2.96 grams of carbon, 0.414 grams of hydrogen, 0.675 grams of oxygen, and 2.63 grams of sulfur. If its molecular mass is about 162 grams, determine both its empirical formula and its molecular formula. What we're going to do here is determine the ratios of the uh, number of moles of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and, and sulfur. So we're going to convert each of these to moles. So 2.96 grams of carbon is how many moles of carbon. So we just do a simple conversion of units, 2.96 grams of carbon. And the, the appropriate conversion is that for every one mole of carbon, we have 12.01 grams. And I'm getting that 12.01 number from the periodic table. There's a, a number that gives us the molecular mass, the molar mass, for every element in the periodic table. So 12.01 grams for every one mole of carbon. And we do that conversion. The grams cancel out and we just get moles of carbon and we get approximately 0 0.246 moles of carbon. And next we have hydrogen. We have 0.414 grams of hydrogen and the appropriate conversion there is for every mole of hydrogen you have 1.008 grams. So this amounts to approximately 0.411 moles of hydrogen. Moving on down the line, oxygen, 0 0.6, 0 0.675 grams of oxygen multiplied by the conversion of one mole of, of oxygen has 16.00 grams in it. The grams cancel out and we have 0 0.042 moles of oxygen. And last is sulfur. Hey, look at that. We got the yellow for the sulfur. 2.63, because sulfur is yellow, 2.63 grams of sulfur. And multiplying that by the appropriate conversion, we have for every one mole of sulfur, again, looking in the periodic table, we see the molar mass of sulfur is 32.07 grams, which gives us approximately 0 0.082 moles of sulfur. Okay, now we have the ratios. We have 0.246 moles of carbon for every 0.411 moles of, of hydrogen, and so on down the line. But we need integers. We need integers for our chemical formulas. So what we're going to do is take the smallest, the, the smallest number that we see, and that is this one, smallest number of moles, and divide everything by that number. So I'm going to divide everything by 0 0.042. So 0 0.042 divided by 0 0.042 equals one oxygen. And 0.411 divided by 0 0.042, I'll put a zero in front of those decimal places, those decimal points. The 411 is 10, approximately, 10 hydrogens, and point zero point two four six divided by 0 0.042 is approximately 6 carbons and 0 0.082 divided by 0 0.042 is approximately two sulfurs. And you're saying, hey, that doesn't come out exactly to an integer. And no, it doesn't. We've rounded it at some point here. And so, so that's why this isn't going to be exactly um, Right, 0 0.082 divided by 0 0.042 is not exactly two, but it's it's pretty darn close, and and that's that's what we're going for here. 
Uh, and, and again, it won't be exact because we've rounded somewhere here. The, the molar mass has been rounded. Uh, these measurements are only uh, are only good to three significant digits. So, so uh, don't worry about it if you're not exactly on an integer. Uh, this this is the correct way to do this. So these are the numbers. These are the ratios then of the number for each one. So I'll write that down. I've got C6, H10, O1. We don't write a subscript of 1 if it is just 1. S2. So that is the answer for the empirical formula. That's the empirical formula. And now, what about its molecular formula? Well, to, do, to determine its molecular formula, what you would do is find its molecular, or find, find the mass of this, of, of this, just these ratios. So you'd have six times the molar mass of, of carbon, which is 12.01, plus uh, 10 times the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.008, plus so on here, one times the molar mass of oxygen, plus two times the molar mass of sulfur, which is, we have it, 32.07. And, and all after, after you do all that, you, you get a mass of this uh, molar mass of 162.28 grams. And so because it says the molecular mass is 162 grams, then we know that, that we have both the empirical and the molecular formula. And here's what I'm saying is, if we had done all of this, found this weight, and, and this mass was half of this, let's say the mass was, uh, what is that, 81. If, if the mass were 81 grams of, of our empirical formula, mass was 81 grams, then we would say, okay, we have the ratios right, but we have to we have to multiply everything by two to get to the um, the molecular formula. But but we did not do that here because we have we have the mass of our empirical formula is the same as the molecular mass, and so so we didn't have to do this. I'm just saying if if we did. Uh, find a mass that was less than the molecular mass that is given to you. Okay, so there we found the, the empirical formula, which happened to be the same as the molecular formula. By the way, a little side note, this is the compound, allicin, which happens to give that distinctive odor for garlic. I hope this was helpful. If you did find it helpful, consider liking it or sharing it with a friend.